All right, everybody. I've been threatening to go bigger for quite some time and I finally am doing it. So these are three 24 by 24 um, cradled wood panels and I am about to start working on all three of them. And I'm working through an abstract intuitive design. So this is just what I'm making up on the spot and I'm just going for it. I had a lot of fun with this. I uh, really just totally went for it. Um, this was a, a rough day <laughs> of parenting and my mother, bless her, said that she would take my children to Portillo's for dinner and her only request was that I had to do something for myself. So I took all the plastic wrap off of these. They've been sitting in a corner for well over a year and I grabbed my paint and went for it. It was really fun just to let loose. I had thought about reworking a different canvas and just wanted to really let loose and not worry about protecting something precious or working around anything. Just wanted to go for it. If you're wondering about my earlier post on Instagram this week, no, I have not decluttered my, my art room yet. So uh, across from those canvases, there's definitely still a messy desk. However, sometimes you just need to prioritize the fun, right? I'm going through and just marking with a, actually it's the back of a paintbrush. I have an old paintbrush that lost its brush. So I'm just kind of carving into that paint. I'm using yellow ochre. It looks very mustardy, but I mean, it really is a mustard color, but this will brighten things up. This is fluorescent red, Nova color paint and I'm putting it on with I think that's just a, a Blick gift card yeah I like using this because you can really control how thick you want the paint if you want it to be thicker you just leave more on it if you want it to be thinner you can go over it again or press down harder the only thing I don't like about the fluorescent paint is that it is one of the more toxic paints. I typically stay away from all the cadmiums because of the heavy metals. I stay away from all of the California Prop 65 things, but I do use them for the fluorescence. I have a uh, just a pencil in one hand, a mechanical pencil, and then the other hand I have a black china marker. And doing it two hands at once helps you helps me think less so that I can just scribble and not worry about it. This is black. And I'm using a catalyst wedge here. I can't tell you how much fun it was to work big after working so small. And even last week with my small grid, it's just been a long time since I've worked on something large, at least something brand new and large. I've been editing other paintings, but starting from scratch has been fun. The reason that I'm working on three at once um, a couple of reasons. One, I don't really have room for more than three if I want to keep them on the wall right now. I really like working on things in a series because I already have the paints out. I can keep everything similar from a color perspective. I can make different choices. So it helps me see more variety right off the bat. I don't have to wait until one painting's done and then start over and then think, how did I make this? Because I will never remember what order I did anything in. 
And while one section is drying, you can work on the other sections. And with acrylic, things dry so quickly that it really helps. By the time you get back to the third one, chances are that one's dry. I wanted to come at a fairly extreme value difference from the beginning. I'm just using white with my hands. It seemed like a good idea at the time. And then I picked white paint off my hands for a full day. And out of my hair because it will come off in the shower. So I recommend trying to get it off before you take a shower. You're going to have white, white flakes in your hair. But it's so, it's really, it just, it seems like it's harder to work on three paintings at once if you're not used to doing it. But somehow it's easier. I know it doesn't make sense if you're not used to it. It seems like it should be much harder because you have to make more decisions. But what I've found to be true is that you are less precious about the decisions that you make because you have three going on at the same time. So you become a little bit less attached to each one individually and you're better able to continue making choices rather than trying to sit back and think what's the right choice. And the, the more I do this, the more I'm learning that making any choice is better than not making a choice and just to go for it. And that's something that making these videos has actually taught me. The more I just keep doing, the better I get as an artist and the more work I produce. But also it's just more interesting. I make decisions that I wouldn't have expected of myself and that I wouldn't have planned out. But because I need to do something to keep going, I've made some pretty interesting decisions along the way. Certainly some that were disastrous, but disaster is kind of fun. It makes things really interesting and you can recover because you just cover it up with paint. It's only paint. Feels very hard when you put so much work into something sometimes to remember that. But at the end of the day, it's just paint. And if you can do it once and make something magical and you push it too far, you can either bring that one back or you can start over if you need to, if you've really gone too far. But you will ha still have more going for you by making more choices than sitting and waiting to make what you think might be the right choice. Because I've waited years to try to figure out what the right next choice is for paintings. Years. And I'm finally learning to just say, okay, well, let's just make a choice today. And then I can, then I can go from there and move on. It's also much more fun. Once you sit back and start waiting too long, it's just not fun anymore. It feels like, oh no, what's going to happen? I have to do the right thing. Now I've waited so long. Now I really have to, to do something nice. Have you ever waited too long to write thank you notes or something like that? And you realize, oh no, it's been six months now and I haven't written a thank you note. Oh gosh, now it has to be like the perfect thank you note because I can't just say thanks for your gift. Love, Jackie. <laughs> right? Um, it's kind of the same thing. If you wait two years to make the right choice on a painting, it's very easy to say, well... I've got to keep waiting now because I've waited so long. I, can't, I don't want to, you know, muck it up now. I promise it's more fun just to keep going. But it does take practice. For me, just the same as you. All right. Off my soapbox about that. So I'm using this paper towel roll to blend colors together. That's as, <laughs> as detailed as I can get. Um, this is from today now. The other one is from yesterday. 
and I finally realized I could actually fit all three on this one wall for your viewing pleasure. And today was collage day. Hooray! I'm using papers, I'm using some tissue, and most of this is, maybe all of it is black and white that I did today. I think there's a, a very uh, few exceptions to that. One reason that I add collage is that I want something to react to. So if I'm feeling lukewarm about my paintings, not even lukewarm, just I don't have a clear direction, then I will often pause and add collage. Add a little pizzazz in there and then it gets me thinking. I really like that checkerboard. That's from that ice cream place in, gosh, where was it? Uh, Some place in California, <laughs> near San Diego. Near Carlsbad. with some Celadon, I tried, ultimately failed to add this piece, but I did try. One thing I noticed today is that I kept choosing long rectangles. So pieces that were long rectangle shapes, much like those checkerboard pieces. A lot of the collage pieces I chose were that same shape. Sometimes I was like, well, all right, I'll just keep going. And sometimes I made a very purposeful decision to, to pick something not that shape. Neither is right or wrong. It just depends on what you want. And the one on the far right is, is really turning out to be more of a grid shaped painting. So I'm not opposed to re rectangles. That white piece I just um, attached is from white butcher paper that I keep under my desk. So those are just doodles and, you know, painting that's around the edges of things and whatnot. It's nice to have a little piece of chaos. <laughs> and those of you who paint very subtle designs may think that all of these are chaos but I like to have some very small details that may or may not get covered up later. We'll see. After you attach to um, tissue paper, you can scrape some of it away if it, if it gets in your way. So if you have a line that continues that you'd like to truncate, you can just use your fingernail to, to scrape it off without disturbing the whole collage piece. That's what I was doing there. I'm trying to add this, another piece of the butcher paper. I used to save the whole giant piece of butcher paper to cut up later. Now I just cut out the parts that look interesting and put them on a shelf much better use of space, <laughs> let me tell ya. The other thing that's, that happens when I work on three things at once is my favorites change. So the, the one on the far right was my favorite. Uh, actually, it wasn't my favorite from the beginning. And then it became my favorite as I was working on it longer after I put the, the black lines in. Then I started liking it a lot more. But as I go, they kind of leapfrog each other. 
whichever one I'm working on at the time becomes a favorite. And again, it just helps to not be too precious with things. So you're, I help myself because I know myself, I get very attached to things. So it helps me loosen up a bit so that I'm not sure what to do. I just do something on a painting, then switch to the next one. And by the time I get to the next one, usually I have some other idea for what to do with it. The piece on the left is noticeably darker than the other two, especially the one on the right, which has way more white in it. Again, nothing right or wrong there, just an observation. Sometimes I will try to add collage to break things up. So if something looks too dark, I will add more white collage to it to lighten it up and vice versa. If something's too light, I'll add more dark. I'm not doing that yet. I'm just trying to find pieces that, that I like in each painting. I'm using a yellow ochre Neocolor crayon, Neocolor 1, so it's not water soluble. And just doing some line work. That's my husband. <laughs> And even though I'm already using the yellow ochre paint and the Neocolor Crayon color is very, very similar to that paint, it's still a different, it impacts the piece differently because this is more of a, um, I don't know, gritty is not really the word, but it doesn't go on as smoothly. There's my husband again. <laughs> um, so it just creates a different look. And it feels different. It's not as smooth, it's not as polished. So I took some of the fluorescent red and I mixed it with some of the Payne's Gray. That's the dark blue I was using to create this raspberry-ish color. Really wasn't sure that I liked it at all. But by the time I was done with it, I really like how it warmed things up. And by blending it, blending the two colors together that I'd already used in the painting makes it so that that color works well with the other two colors. So if I had just taken a raspberry straight from a bottle somewhere else, it may or may not have worked. But by using colors and, and blending colors together that are, I'm already using, it's a cheat code to make sure that your colors all work together. I wish I was one of those people who could get dressed up and then paint. So I looked super cute <laughs> in like a, you know, white linen oversized shirt and some linen pants or something like that. I am not that person. I am the person who paints in her pajamas pretty much. Sweatshirt, yoga pants. <laughs> it's just what I do.
That's the price of admission from watching me paint large paintings. You're stuck with my pajamas. My loungewear, excuse me. So as I'm using it now kind of as a bit of a glaze, this kind of raspberry color, but it's warming it up really nicely. I've made another shade of this color, another combination. So I've just added extra Payne's gray, which is now creating a plum color. It's also very transparent. So it's a, a plum, it's a deep plum color, but if you blot it away, it becomes much more violet. I don't know why, I don't know if the, the uh, fluorescent red lifts more. I don't know why that would be the case, but the blue stays behind more than the red. This is some Payne's Gray mixed with white. That I'm carving into. Just adjusting the shape because this is again what I'm realizing that everything I add tends to be that same long rectangle. I love panels because of how easy it is to carve into the paint with your the back end of your paintbrush. Now, bringing out the big guns. So now I'm adding the quinacridone gold, which is always my favorite way to warm things up. I mean, it looks so, so satisfying to add that color. It's almost like the sun is just shining on it. Maybe it's just me. I just love it. Warms up the yellow ochre, warms up everything. So even though these are still probably a long way, oh, there's my husband again, <laughs> chatting with his hands. I, I decided I would block some things out with a cream to keep the warmth, but just start to create a bit more light in these lighter colors that things would feel lighter from a weight perspective visual weight more paints gray
So these are definitely not done, but I made huge progress. Loving where they're at right now. I hope you've enjoyed watching this. I hope it's helpful to you who've been asking me about working on bigger panels and bigger canvases. There will be an update. I don't know exactly when, so stay tuned. Let me know what you think. If you haven't subscribed yet, please subscribe. Uh, it really helps me, it really helps me really get in good with the algorithm. So it shares my videos with more people. Thank you so much for watching. Take care.